Welcome back to Learn RAS, and in this video, we're going to learn about the 2D water surface gradients and specifically what these different colored arrows mean, how many you can use them to review your model results. Uh, today, we're looking at a 2D rain on mesh model using HECRAS version 6.4.1. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to show you how to find the option to turn on the 2D water surface uh, gradient arrows. So if you go to your map results and click uh, right click on any one of your results layers and go to layer properties. What you'll see is on the right hand side of your dialog box, you've got the additional options and the third option down. It's the plot 2D water surface gradient option. If we turn that off, we'll get more of the normal view here. If you turn that on, we'll get our 2D water surface gradient arrows appearing on our display here. And the first thing that these arrows are telling us is they're telling us the direction of the water surface elevation gradient. So each arrow is pointing in the direction uh, of the lower water surface elevation across the cell faces. And we can see this a little bit more clearly with the water surface elevation uh, layer turned on. So you can see how each of these arrows are pointing in the direction of the lower water surface elevation and in indicating to us the direction of the flow. Now, what do the different colors of the arrows represent? Uh, well, starting with the blue arrows, these are indicating a normal flow pattern. Uh, not to be confused, that doesn't necessarily mean a normal depth. It's just indicating a normal flow pattern. Uh, but this is indicating uh, to us where the upstream water surface elevation is greater than the downstream water surface elevation and that the flow is with the predominant velocity. So generally, these are going to be areas where there is um, sufficient depth of flow um, where the interpolation of the water surface elevations are going to be appropriate. Now, the yellow arrows, these are going to indicate areas of a shallow depth of flow. So you can see here, for example, we've got uh, part of the uh, cell face is above the, the, the depth grade here. So it's being flagged as a shallow flow. And this is indicating um, where the depth may not be significant over the uh, entire cell face, though there appears to be hydraulic connectivity uh, between the cells across the face. Um, these yellow arrows, arrows may indicate areas where you may need some additional mesh refinements like break lines or refinement regions. So you are going to want to pay attention to the yellow arrows. Now, the green arrows, um, these are indicating an intermediate depth of flow. So the green arrow um, is, is kind of in between the blue and the yellow. So um, not necessarily flagging anything problematic for you, uh, but it's just telling you something um, about the, the depth of flow and to pay attention to where those might change to a shallow um, flow indicated by the yellow arrows. Now, the gray arrows, which may be a little bit hard to see with the depth grid, so I'll turn on the water surface elevation grid. Um, the gray arrows are indicating backwater, which usually means that the flow is moving with an adverse slope. In other words, uh, flow is moving from a cell with a lower terrain to a cell with a higher terrain. And this is to be expected, uh, particularly on the rising limb of a hydrograph as flow is uh, spreading out from the main channel. Um, so if we can see, we've got our main channel here. And if we look at the depth grade, you can see how flow does move away from that. Um, particularly, you're going to see that happening on the rising limb as flow is spreading out. It's moving from cells with lower terrain values to cells with higher terrain values as that flow is spreading out. And finally, we have the pink arrows. Uh, these arrows indicate um, that the flow is most likely passing through critical depth, which would also likely indicate a weir flow type behavior. Um, so you are going to want to pay attention to those pink arrows where you see them, uh, particularly where they're in areas of, of deeper flow or areas within your main inundation extent. Um, you can see here we've got a uh, roadway embankment and the cell faces are aligned um, to that uh, roadway embankment here. And you can also see that we've got uh, the various types of arrows represented along the cell faces for this roadway embankment. I think all the arrows are represented except for the gray backwater arrow. And what this is showing us is that at certain stretches of this roadway embankment, we've got normal flow. We've got a, a deeper type flow happening over this roadway. Uh, there are sections of the roadway where there is a shallower type flow happening over. 
And there's also areas where there is likely critical flow occurring. And we can see if we turn on the water surface elevation grid that where we've got those pink arrows, we see a sharp drop in the water surface elevation across the cell faces here. So this is likely indicating that we've got a weir flow type of behavior um, happening over the crest of this roadway. Whereas other portions of the roadway, we're seeing more of a, a deeper or intermediate type of flow occurring. Um, last thing I want to mention about these arrows is that you can see them uh, at different points in your simulation along your mapped interval. So uh, this can be particularly helpful if you want to see where flow or a critical flow first occurs. Um, you can move your slider and you can see that um, flow over the roadway is, is first occurring at a couple locations here, uh, indicating uh, by the pink arrow showing us that we're likely going through critical depth, having a weir flow first. And that transitions to more of a normal flow as the uh, flow on the downstream side gets uh, deeper and the water surface elevations um, uh, transition more gradually across that um, roadway embankment. And then even at the peak, we still see some of that critical flow or that weir flow happening on certain segments of the roadway um, at this particular point in time. So um, that's how you look at the results using the 2D water surface gradients. I think they're a neat option to review uh, your model results and evaluate what's going on in your model, particularly if you're looking for areas where you might need some additional refinement. So hope you found this uh, helpful. Let me know if you have any comments or questions below and make sure you subscribe if you want to see more content like this.